So I got a, I got a, a personal confession to make, right? Um, lately, I've been addicted to a television show. Okay. Now I know you guys. I know you guys <laughs> are supposed to be doing real estate 24/7. Don't be watching TV all day. Okay. But I try. <laughs> Why am I looking directly at you? I don't know. Uh, but you know, I blame Gil for this because he brought up this show. He brought up this show the other day, and I do try. Don't watch the show. But I do try to watch shows that elevate my mind in some way. Right? So if I do watch TV, I'm like, okay, I want to learn something, I want to do something, right? So I've been addicted to this show called Alone. Okay, has anybody seen this show? <laughs> okay, so this is a really, really incredible show. All right? So this show is called Alone, and this is what they do. They get a bunch of survivalists, right? These are survivalists. These are people who are trained to survive in the wild, right? And then they drop them in the most remote places, right? And as you guessed it, they're alone. Right? They drop them in all these different locations in the most remote places. I'm talking crazy weather. I'm talking animals. I'm talking all these different things, right? And they have to survive out there. And here's how you win the game. You got to endure. You've got to outlast everybody. Not just that. You don't know how much everybody's going to last. Mm -hmm. Right? So you're out alone in the woods surviving, and you're thinking, how long do I have to stay out here? to beat the next person. And I don't know when it's gonna happen, right? Now, it's kinda cool when it does happen. So this is how you get hooked on the show. You're like, oh my God, who's gonna make it out of this, right? Like, and then, and then, so it's kinda cool. So they, they, they bring in, so every once in a while they do medical checks. So this is how they keep them off the toes. So you don't know if you won or not, like if a medical check just comes out, it just comes out. So they trick them, right? So they come out, they're like, hey, we're gonna check you, blah, blah, blah. You know, people have lost a lot of body weight, stuff like that. You know, it's hard to eat in these crazy places, right? And they're like, hey, man, you know, tell us how much longer you think you can last, blah, blah, blah. And then they finally tell them, like, you won. You won. You, find, you won the show. And they're just like, whatever, they're just breaking down. And I, it doesn't show it here uh, because of the, something with the slide. But basically, here's the prize. The prize is $500,000. If you outlast everybody, you get $500,000. So I was thinking to myself, because I don't know if you guys do the same thing I do, but like I, I filter everything through life, right? Like, so I'm, every time like, I play a sport, I'm thinking I'm playing life. When I play, play real estate, I believe I'm playing life, right? I believe that if you do the right things in real estate, you'll do the right things in life and vice versa. That's how I look at things, right? So when I'm watching this show, I'm like, oh my God, this show is real estate. This show is real estate. This show is life. And I'm asking myself, what does it take? <laughs> what does it take to win? You know, that's what I'm asking myself, Gil. What does it take to win? You know, so I had to put my boy up there because you know nobody likes winning more than my boy Gil Ramos, right? So I started actually analyzing. I've watched a lot of these episodes, so I think I got this thing down. Okay? So here's what it takes to win in real estate, or if you ever happen to get on this show. Okay? Number one is you need tools and skills. Okay, we just went through a bunch of a skill session, right? We're calling this the summer of skill. We're in the summer of skill, right? Because we're preparing for the next season, right? You don't prepare in the season during that season. You prepare before, right? So they tell you, hey, you can bring 10 things out here. You better choose wisely. You better choose your tools wisely, and you better know how to use them because you will not survive out there. You understand? And you have to have a special set of skills. You have to actually have skills. You will never survive on this show without skills. Right? That's the one thing. You'll be, you'll be out in a few days. You're like, I don't even know how to get food here. Like, I don't even know how to do water here. Right? So that's number one. And you need to be thinking about this in terms of real estate because this, this, this is the absolute truth. Right? The second thing is you got to work what you got. See, you guys spend so much time comparing yourself. I'm a new agent. This person's got this. this one. You work with what you got. Right? I literally saw this man. There was a, there was a plastic bottle that washed up on shore. Right? And this, guy's, this guy couldn't be happier. He's like, because you're allowed to use shit that washes up, right? So he's like, and I'm plastic bottle. I'm like, what's this guy going to do? He creates something called a fish trap, right? He cuts the top of the bottle off, and, he, and, he, and he's like, I'm going to put these little fish traps. And what happens is fish will swim in there, and then they get confused, and they get trapped in the bottle. And I'm like, that shit will never work. <laughs> Damn it, if this guy didn't catch all these fish with this thing. I was like, oh, my God. Like, literally, all these little fish came in there. And I was like, oh, my God, that's possible. But he was working with what he got. Right? All of us in this room have something. There's things that Joe Denny has that I don't have. There's angles that you guys have that I don't have. There's connections. You come from hospitality, right? And fitness and all that stuff. I don't have that same kind of background. He needs to use his network and what he's got. Those, that's what he's got. Don't worry about what I do, 
right? I did something different when I started, but I used what I had, okay? The next thing is you need to prioritize what's important. Now out there, it's you know food, shelter, and water, and you better pick right, right? Because some things are more important than others when you get out there and you start. But it's the same thing in real estate. You need to prioritize what's a dollar productive activity. To me, that's food, food, shelter, and water. Because when you start in this business, you are technically dying, right? You know, there's no check. Anybody got a guaranteed pay check? Okay, no, you, me neither. So literally, when you start this real estate game, you're starting that. So you better, you better stop getting cute. You better start focusing on the fundamentals. It's food, water, and shelter. Whatever, whatever it is in real estate that's thought productive, which by the way is usually talking to another human being, you need to focus on that 100%, especially if you're new. You want to be a secret agent or you're dying. If you don't let nobody know you're in real estate, you've got, you got a big, big problem. So prioritize what's important. This is how you win. And I'm giving you the tools too, so if you ever get on the show, you're going to crush it. Okay? <laughs> Here's the other thing you got to do. You got to focus on a project, right? So once you establish what you got and you establish what's important, you need to set, you need to set projects for yourself. What happens out there is that in just like real estate, you got so much time. I mean, I'm not telling you when to, I, I, do, have I ever called anybody here and told them when to wake up, when to stop working, what to do? No, it's your business. You decide all that. So if you don't have something to work on, if you're not giving yourself a project the same way I hear, you'll go crazy. And you'll lose this game. This guy actually made like a whole little football game and made little dice, whatever. He's trying to keep his mind occupied on the projects and execute those projects or he's going to lose, right? Your mind, you're gonna stay in your shelter doing nothing, which is your house. And you're gonna lose this real estate game. The other thing you have to have is multiple ways to eat. Multiple ways to eat, right? If you were here a few months back, Gil talked about systems. Gil said, did Gil say you need one system? No. Gil says you need multiple systems running at the same time. If you're going to win this game, especially with a shifting market, you need to have a lot of lines in the water. Now, these guys do it a little bit differently out here, right? One might put something called out. And by the way, Gil, this is funny. It's called the Gil Net. It's called, <laughs> it's called the Gil Net, right? And that's something you could set in the water. That's something you could set in the water. And while you sleep, it catches fish for you. And you just go out and check the gill net. That could be your marketing system. That could be your drip campaigns. That could be all that kind of stuff. Or you could set some snares. That's another kind of passive campaign that you can set up, right? You can go back to your shelter, check the snare tomorrow, see if you caught something. But here's the deal, guys. Lead generation. What? It's just, lead generation. it's just lead generation. But guys, don't forget that sometimes you just got to hunt, right? Those are all things that you're waiting for things to come to you, right? Sometimes you got to hunt. Sometimes you got to pick up the phone. Sometimes you gotta go do that open house, knock on some doors, meet some people, join that club, go to that event. You gotta go hunt. Like, it, you're not gonna be able just to set traps and hope you're gonna survive out there. You need multiple ways to eat, okay? Next thing is patience. I love this quote. Patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. I'm telling you, your attitude will kill you out in this show, right? So you set up all these different systems and stuff like that and you're working on your projects but you're impatient mm -hmm. and you're thinking that the net's gonna have all the fish tomorrow, right? You're gonna start going into this like rabbit hole like, oh my God, like what's happening? Things aren't working, blah, 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 and your attitude goes down. Very similar to this, and I, I'll, this is my quote, God's timing has a frustrating perfection. Does anybody always want things to happen faster? I always do. That's what frustrates me and I have to, remind myself that this happens in steps, that God needs you to learn certain things and he needs you to see certain things and he needs you to see some contrast, you know? Like one of the most proudest things that I have about this group is the people that come back to our group, right? The people that left and then came back because they have some contrast, right? They understand what they had to go through first in order to come back and be a part of this culture, right? This one's important, grace. Give yourself grace. You're gonna, you're gonna make some mistakes out here. If you beat yourself up out in the wilderness, in this real estate wilderness, you're dead. You're gonna, you're gonna tap out. You're gonna tap out because you'll just be beating yourself up over different times. Forgive yourself. People make mistakes out there. I just saw a guy the other night, he built his shelter on the swampy land and literally in the middle of the night, the whole thing flooded on him. And he was like, you know how much time he spent building that shelter? Now he's gonna have to rebuild it somewhere else. But he was like, no, I'm gonna reset today. 
I'm going to reset my mindset today. I'm going to do some things and I'm going to come back. I'm going to look at that shelter again and I'm going to spend all day moving this shit somewhere else. Right? Because if not, I'm not going to make it. And he forgave himself. Here's a big one. You got to have a big why. You have to have a big why. Because here's what you hear on the show all the time. I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. They'll say that all the time. Look, like, I don't know. I, I've been out here. And they might be doing well. Yeah. They might actually be doing well. They're just like, I don't know why I'm doing it. I'm shouting at the TV, $500,000. <laughs> Nobody says it, Gil. Nobody says 500000 You know why? Because your why can't be money. Yep. Your why can't be money. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy because even me, like as much as I want to be wealthy, financially free, all that stuff, it doesn't keep me motivated like that. You have to have a big why. It's got to be, you know, and if you are winning the 500,000, most of them will be saying, I, I want to do that for my kids, my wife. It's not for them. They're not like, so I can grab a Lambo when I get back home. It's never that, right? So your why has to be compelling, right? Because even if you're doing all the right things, you got to have something to keep going. And then finally, you have to have some will. Right? And this comes from the inside. It has, because even if you're doing all those things right, there comes those days. Because see, they give you this phone. And at any moment in time, you can pick up that phone and say, I tap out, take me home. Any moment in time. Hide the phone? Hide the, no. <laughs> you don't want to hide the phone in case you can't find it again. Because <laughs> it is dangerous out there. It is dangerous. They good question. They filmed their own. They literally are alone, alone, alone. They have to carry around the cameras and film themselves the whole time. But they've got, they've got this phone. There's nobody out there. Hey, please don't film on the show. Yeah. There's nobody. <laughs> 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 Suddenly production drops. No. Uh, but you have to have will because every, every day that little phone's like, dial me. <laughs> time to tap out. <laughs> Warm showers await. Right? And, it's, and you have to have an internal fire, and, this, it, and it goes to, I literally was going to put the power of one more up there. I'm glad I didn't because you used it. And you have to say to yourself, no, I'm not, not today. I'm not going to quit today. I'm going to go one more day because you never know when somebody else is going to quit. And a lot of times it comes within days of each other, right? So you just got to outlast, right? But here's the thing. The crazy part about this is it's definitely a physical struggle, right? So you're going to starve. <laughs> it's going to be tough, right? You're going you're gonna to have to climb things, chop stuff down. It's very, very physical. But what's the one, what do you think is the one thing that takes people out in this game? This is it. What takes people out in the real estate game? This. And it messes with you in a couple of ways. This is how it messes with you, okay? Number one is expectation versus reality. You have, you have false expectations of how things are supposed to be. I saw a guy, I, thought, I watched the eighth season first, and I went back to the first. I was like, nobody, I was like, somebody quit in six days in the eighth season. I was like, oh my God, this guy tapped out early. There was a guy in this last season that tapped out in like five hours. <laughs> like, like he got off the boat, he walked around, and he saw some bear shit. And a couple bear paws around, and he was like, no, nah, I didn't sign up for this kid. And then he like, and, and they're like, yeah, come get me. Come get me. But I'm thinking to myself, what did you expect, bro? You saw the first season? They're going to drop you in a place with bears and cougars and wolves. It's going to be hard to eat. The terrain is crazy, and it rains like every single day, and they drop you there in, in winter. In the winter? In the winter. This is my five hours. He's like, I'm out. I'm like, what did you expect? Because here's the deal. The difference between expectation and reality is your disappointment. Yeah. And it's freaking made up. It's like when a seller said, I, I had a client of mine say the other day, he's like, uh, he's like uh, I was offering the uh, uh, short-term rental. And he's like, well, I don't want to lose $40,000 on this. I'm like, what $40,000 did you lose? They're like, oh, because I wanted to sell it for this. Who gives a shit what you wanted to sell it for? Why don't, why don't you say $3 million? You lost $3 million. You're just making shit up. So we got to stop making up because that's the difference. The re and by the way, the difference between expectation and reality is fear. You start fear like, hey, is everything going all right? Oh, everything's going real bad. What are you talking about? Did somebody tell you real estate was easy? What kind of expectation is that? You're building your own business. This is one of the few businesses that you can close one deal and be profitable. Most businesses, go start a restaurant, see what happens to you. <laughs> no, go start one. You're not going to be profitable for three years if you can last. 
not this business, and we're complaining, we're like, oh my God, this is hard. I gotta pick up the phone. <laughs> gotta do an open house. I gotta walk into a room where I don't know what the hell I'm gonna say. So, <laughs> right? All right, so the other thing is you better like yourself. One guy said, if you're gonna be out here alone, you better like yourself. Because here's the thing, when you're out alone in the woods for this long, everything surfaces up. You're not talking to anybody. Every mistake you've made, every person you've wronged, everything you don't like about yourself, or whatever the case may be, it bubbles up. And these guys have to deal with that. And women, it's men and women out there doing it, right? So that's very, very important. But here's the crazy part. This guy right here, I was just watching this guy, right? This guy was crushing it, right? And I, I mean, literally, like, if you go to his camp, I mean, that's the guy that built the little game. He had a beautiful camp. He was eating. A lot of times people are just like, I'm just hungry. I got to get the hell out of here. I just can't eat. I can't fish. I can't catch shit. This guy was killing it. I'm like, that guy's probably going to win. Then the next scene, tapping out. <laughs> Guess what the reason was? I miss Barbara. I miss Barbara. We were made from human connection. That's what you don't realize. See, if you think you're an introvert, or like that, that, that relationships don't matter to you and all that stuff is bullshit, get out into the wilderness for 30, 40, 50, 75 days and you'll realize how much you appreciate people and how much you appreciate the people in your life and how they, important it is to put great people in your life if you go out into the wilderness. Now, I, I suggest that you watch this, this uh, this video on YouTube, I've been watching this, right? So I saw this and it just, it just had a cool name, The Fourth Turning, right? And it was an interview that Tony Robbins did with this guy that wrote the book, The Fourth Turning. He also wrote a book called Generations. And it's funny because right now, it might seem a little weird. Times seem weird, right? We just went through a pandemic. Now, now people, I didn't even know about monkeybox because I don't even watch the news. I don't even know, I don't watch the news anymore. I don't watch the news anymore. Somebody had to tell me, I was like, what's monkeypox? <laughs> I was like, I was like, what's monkeypox? I'm like, I'm not even watching that, right? But the reality is, is that we've had a series of crises, right? We had the 2008 crash, we had these things, and now the, the pandemic and the recession, and everything seems like it's all going to shit. Well, guess what? This is a cyclical thing within time. Like, this has happened before in our history. It happens every, every 20 years, times change and people change. But there's a cycle. This shitty stuff was happening, has happened before. And that shouldn't make you feel bad, that should let you feel like, hey, I can anticipate this and I can take advantage of this. Because I've said this many times, wealth is built during volatility. It's not that people who are prepared for the shift don't lose, they win. I was talking to Deontay, Deontay's like, man, these kids are soft these days, right? And I was like, wait. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, you know what, part of it is right. You know, they're a little bit soft these days. But, and he was like, but he made a point. He said, this time during the shift is a time to get market share. It's not just, like Gil said, you gotta dominate. It ain't the time to just bunker down. It's the time to go dominate, right? But let me tell you what he said the most important thing was. Like, you know, Tony Robbins, well, what should we do during a fourth turning, which we're in the midst of, which is the crisis era, right? And he goes, keep your friends and family close. He goes, Tony Robbins says the real friends and family, the people who are the real people, the people that, that inspire you, that build you up. I call, I, I call people my family. Like, if you're a friend, you're part of my family, right? And so it made me start thinking, this is the most important thing right now is relationships. Because here's the deal, guys, you're not on a show called Alone. You're in a show called The Alliance. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and, and here's the thing. There's a lot of, there, hey, listen, there's a lot of companies out there that are co going to copy our model. That's a normal thing. Hey, when you prove a model's brilliant, somebody's going to try to copy the model. You know what they can't copy? Nicole. This. We don't, we're not, I'm not going to compete against anybody against the model because that don't matter. What matters is this group. This mastermind, the people that you're around. I just talked with Manny that was, I was talking to earlier. And Manny said, why am I here? Well, I was at another commercial brokerage, but it was just me and the other guy, and I needed to be around the energy. Right? That is the most important thing that we have here, and you need to take advantage of it. If you're not showing up here, if you're not making friends and connections here, you're missing the boat. Elmar, you just told me today, he's like, I'm going to start showing up. I think it's the only thing you should talk about is showing up. That's the only thing because of the connections you guys are going to build with each other. If I didn't show up, I would have never met Gil Ramos. Mm -hmm. 